In November 2022, a video called Fighting Games for Noobs was released on Maximilian Dude's channel. It starts with Maximilian addressing a question on his stream. Is Guilty Gear Strive a good game for beginners? To which he responds, at this point, I would say no. I have a lot of respect for Maximilian and I know he is passionate about helping get more new people into fighting games. When I saw that video as a beginner who was getting into Strive at the time, I asked myself whether I was out of touch or was it Maximilian who was wrong? Maximilian goes on to say that Strive was a fantastic game for beginners for the first six months, but then the hardcore audience stayed and got really good while most people dropped off. In this video, I'll talk a bit about Strive and whether fighting game beginners should focus their efforts on a new released fighting game over an older one. The argument is that with a fighting game that isn't either brand new or the latest entry of Street Fighter, Tekken or Mortal Kombat, there won't be many other beginners playing the game online, meaning newcomers will lose a lot more and struggle to learn or become demotivated and give up altogether. This clearly makes sense to a degree. It is nice when a game has loads of people online so you can find a match within seconds, especially if some of them are at a similar level to you so you have a fair chance of winning. I think Max Maximilian was wrong about Strive in this case though. In August 2022, a bit over a year after the game's release, Arc System Works announced that Strive had sold over a million copies. One year later, in August 2023, Arxis announced the game has over two and a half million players. That means that more newcomers joined the fray in the second year of the game's life than in its first year, providing a steady stream of players at all levels for noobs to lock horns with. Strive does try to give beginners a straightforward jumping on point. The tutorial is very simple, completely leaving out the more complicated mechanics of the game, but it shows enough movement, basic attacks and blocking, as well as the combo breaking burst, for a player to go and have some fun without worrying about Roman cancels or anything like that. The real learning material is in the mission mode. This is broken into loads of little bits and separated by difficulty levels. Some missions have specific versions for each character, such as simple Gatling combos, and there are two levels of matchup missions for information on how to respond to an opponent's tools. I think the way to approach it is play through a couple of missions, then fight your friends or online opponents or the arcade mode until you feel you have got what you learned solidly into your head and you're ready to add a bit more. It is a shame that there is so little single player content in Strive. The story is not playable, it's literally a long anime movie. You're basically stuck with arcade mode and survival for single player content. Maybe they could have built the missions into a bigger single player experience, a bit like Street Fighter 6's World Tour mode or Soul Calibur 6's Soul Chronicle. However, due to the huge sales of the game and renewed interest whenever they drop a new DLC character, as well as crossplay, there is pretty much always someone to play online in my experience, even at lower levels. But okay, Strive has been way more successful than almost anyone expected. Maybe we can lump it in with Street Fighter, MK and Tekken for the sake of discussion. What if Maximilian had been right about hardly anyone new picking Strive up? What about the dozens or hundreds of fighting games which might have had a rush of players on release, but now are mainly played by the hardcore player base who love it and have been playing for years. What's it like for a game like that to be the first fighting game you really take seriously? Let's hear from someone who did just that with another older Guilty Gear game. I'm Go, and I also make fighting game videos. The first fighter I ever made a serious effort to learn was Guilty Gear Plus R last summer. I had dabbled with other fighters in the years prior, but had zero fundamentals or anything of the sort. I chose Plus R because I really liked Axel in Guilty Gear Strive, but was getting frustrated with that game and wanted a reset. Starting with a game like Plus R that's already been out for a really long time came with significant benefits. The first being that everything I could want to know as a beginner had already been figured out. There was no shortage of info on how the systems and characters worked. I was quickly able to find guides and get to training. Along with that, there was already a massive amount of match footage for me to watch and learn from. But on the other hand, games like this don't have many lower level players for other beginners to face and pick up wins against. I felt like I jumped into a shark's den when I first went online, because I was playing people who had been with Plus R since day one and could fight circles around me. This taught me how important it was to play for improvements and not for wins, because I wasn't getting many of those. But what really attracts me to older games as opposed to newer ones is the lack of updates. There's no chance that my character gets thrown a major change anywhere from 3 months to 3 years into a game's lifespan. Everything I'm learning about the game right now will be applicable forever, and I really like that stability. 
So that experience does confirm what Maximilian was saying, that in an older game with a smaller player base, a beginner is going to find far fewer opponents of their own level. But that doesn't necessarily make it bad as a beginner's first serious fighting game. You might find other ways to measure your progress and set yourself other milestones and goals aside from online victories. I recommend checking out Go's Plus R Diaries playlist to see some of the ways he tackled learning this game a decade or more after its release. I can imagine that taking a more deliberate approach to learning the game, using the years of knowledge the community has developed, and finding tools that work against those dedicated players will make you a much better fighting game player than spending the same amount of time getting some relatively easy wins over other beginners, potentially picking up habits and approaches that won't work against higher level players. On the other hand, the frustration of losing a lot might make it harder for you to stick to the process long enough to see much progress. I think this is the core of Maximilian's point. New players need to be able to have fun quickly. If their first several hours in the game are getting absolutely destroyed over and over, many beginners will find the experience off-putting. But how many players at your level do you need to be playing the game before you can have fun facing someone at around your own level? Arguably, just one. If there's a game you want to try but feel intimidated by the hardcore player base, ask around. You might find another beginner who would love to have someone to practice with. Persuade one of your friends to try it, if you have any. And if you don't have any, maybe this is how you can make one. Even a friend who is much better at the game than you are can be a big help to keep you motivated and having fun, compared to playing a game even with a huge player base but where you feel like you're not connected to the community in any way. There are also beginners who want to play fighting games for the single player content. Admittedly, Strive is probably not the best pick for them, but games with smaller online communities due to being older like Soul Calibur 6 or just not being as well known like Pocket Bravery can still provide a lot of fun and opportunity to get to grips with the fighting game basics without ever going online. Likewise, someone who is obsessed with Dragon Ball might be willing to put up with losing because they love the lore, characters and art artwork of Dragon Ball fighters. Maybe the educational tools in a game just click with how that player learns. Undernight and Melty Blood have extensive tutorials that could be perfect for some beginners. Ultimately, the best fighting game for a beginner to pick up is the one they want to play. The game that will make you good at fighting games is the one that makes you want to come back again and again, even when you lose a lot, because you really connect with a character, or you love the visuals, or the gameplay is super satisfying, or you want to talk about it with your buddies who play it. I think another thing to keep in mind is that your first fighting game hopefully won't be your last, and you can play more than one at once. One great advantage of older games is they are often a lot cheaper, especially in a good sale, you can get a fantastic game with all its DLC for a fraction of the price of the base game of the latest release. So play what looks cool to you, play what your friends want to play. If Street Fighter 6 or Mortal Kombat 1 look fun to you, great, go for it, and you will have so many people to play with online, and if you want to play an older game with a smaller community and you know what you're getting yourself in for then just go for it and see how you get on you can always sack it in and play some Tekken 8 instead if you don't like it and by the way I make lots of videos about different fighting games from a beginner's perspective so check some of those out if you want to find out what makes a difference to a noob's experience in these games and don't forget to subscribe to Golo and check out his videos too